Hello, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about non-endgame clan battle comps. What I mean by non-endgame is that a whole bunch of you I know are just not 93 yet or like won't be able to like keep up with the level cap increases. I don't know how everybody's going to use like, you know, the clan battle resources that I put together if like, you know, these don't even work for most of people. So that's why I figured maybe I'll just start from zero. I'll start with like a seemingly fresh account and let's see what we kind of put together. It's kind of like an exercise. For you more veteran players, I would appreciate it if you guys stuck around and let me know how I did. If there are any like kind of changes that you would make or any kind of like tips that you think would be relevant to this. All right, with that being said, let's jump into, actually, let's jump into the spreadsheet. All right, guys, so here's the spreadsheet. I'm going to try assume like as little three stars as possible. So let's say you started off the game and like you hopefully have rolled for Makoto or Jun. If you have not rolled for Makoto or Jun, then I, I don't know, go back and roll for Makoto or Jun. But let's assume that we have none of like the premium characters. So like none of these guys. Looking at this and considering you're like in the early game, if you're battling against like phase one, phase two, you're trying to build three teams. I think I can see the priorities here. So I'll definitely have Miyako as one of the characters of one of the teams. Nozomi, I believe is extremely reasonable. And for our last tank, we could consider using Kuka, but I probably would actually just use Pekarin or something like that. All right, you know what guys? I am actually going to take Pekarin instead simply because the bosses predominantly are like physical damage based rather than magical. Kuka tends to underperform in CB like she's just not really that good but if you guys do find that she's working then yeah definitely try use her so as you can see this is early game i'm looking for three tanks i'm looking for three dps's and a healer so probably something like a chica into the healer spot a uh, yui into the healer spot and potentially a misato who is actually not in my spreadsheet yet so let me get her real quick Alrighty, misato welcome to the spreadsheet i'm not sure if you've noticed but i'm actually using three aoe healers and the reason for this is because cb damage tends to be aoe on top of that we've got like physical damage mitigation with you magical damage mitigation with Misato, etc, etc. A couple of other characters that I would consider using in the healer slot is probably like Maho and Yukari. If you're going to use any healer, Yukari is probably the best healer. And the reason is because she also provides offensive capabilities with her TP boost. But yeah, so this is what we're starting off with. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to have here borrow Makoto. Let's make that look a little bit nicer with the uh, wrap the text. How do I wrap the text like that? And then let's center it and pull that bad boy up. We're going to do this three times because you're pretty much always going to borrow Makoto. If you're able to have a Makoto of your own, then you should borrow a Kari at some point. If you are to use the Kari, remember that you have to use it with, I believe, Miyako in this case. Kari, I believe, stands in front of Nozomi and Pekrin. So here, I guess I'll just make the edit. Kari or Makoto. All right, what we've got next is then another six slots of what we call flex DPS. However, this is where I'm going to start making assumptions. What we have is a couple of options. So I'm looking at this. I'm seeing a lot of two stars. I'm like, okay, if you guys aren't getting all the two stars at least, then you're hella unlucky. So I'm going to make what I believe is a good assumption that you're going to have at least all of the two stars. So one of like, I guess the guiding principles of building a CB team is that you want at least two sources of defense down. In this case, we're probably only going to be able to run physical defense down. So let's say Mitsuki into here and Shinobu into here. Technically, we have a third defense down, and that is actually in Kiara. Kiara provides the physical defense down, although it's kind of crap. This is what we could do. This is not what we have to do. What we want then is to populate these three with like some sort of like awesome DPS. So in the scenario that this is borrowing Makoto, this could be a Kari, for example. This one could be a Hiori, and this one could be a Shiori. Now, this is probably when it starts to get a little bit tricky. I guess from here, you start learning about the archetypes of each of the characters. A lot of close range characters, frontal characters do indeed have lifesteal. For example, Kari, Hiyori, Makoto, Jita, Tamaki, they all have lifesteal. Then what about the archers? The archers actually don't have lifesteal. A lot of the time, the archers will outdamage a lot of the frontal units. However, they do not have the sustain. So depending on the boss that you're fighting, you could bring the Shiori, but if you're feeling that, you know, the boss is doing a bit too much damage, especially to your backline and you don't have heals, then you would take one of the more frontal units and you just slap them in. However, at this point in the game, if you're having those kinds of issues, it's best to just run a healer. So in that case, I would be like Susana into here, Shiori, into here and like this is actually looking pretty good. I'll say at this point in the game the top three performers for clan battle are like Kaori, Suzuna and Shiori. Another very interesting tactic especially in early game is that you could use Tamaki. I actually used this tactic in our last CB where we used Tamaki to make sure that the boss would be later. So therefore Tamaki is helping us take less damage over time whilst also providing some level of DPS. So realistically as you progress through the game what you really want to do is to remove these three healers as well as these three tanks. Especially considering that you're going to be borrowing three units 
units, one unit for each team. Hopefully you can borrow five star units here. If you can borrow the five star units here, more often than not, you can actually find the level of sustain to make it work without a healer and therefore you would up your DPS. I'm not going to assume any of that yet. So like we're saying like early game, this is kind of like the team that we're looking at. If you're able to, the first thing you look for is to actually remove these three healers and replace them with more DPSs. You'll notice that at this point, I'm not using any magic DPS and that's because like the majority of them are three stars right now. It's quite hard to justify using magic DPS, especially because like Skyru isn't out yet. Not to mention that she's also a three star unit. A couple of other characters that I would definitely consider are Kokoro. Kokoro actually, you know what? She really should be in this comp. If nowhere else, we could actually just throw Kokoro into here. The reason for that is because I believe the P defense down that is from Kiaru is just not good enough. I think all of Kokoro's buffs and the fact that she's like a mild attacker and heals herself, you can definitely use her up front here. So again, we are still in the early stages of the game. So I'm going to have a look at, you know, what are the priorities in leveling up here? Which characters in here are going to persist with us through to end game? And the answer to that is Mitsuki, Kari, Shiori, Kokoro, and Shinobu and Suzuna actually. All six of these are actually great. Next logical progression would be Mitsuki to three stars. Kari, you should be buying her coins from the day you started. Unfortunately, Suzuna shares the same shop as Kari. Only after you get Kari to three stars should you get your Suzuna to three stars. As for Shinobu, Shinobu is serviceable at two stars. However, you can farm her node for three stars. However, I would not recommend going beyond that. Kokoro, I would be farming from the day I started all the way to five stars. So between like now and CB, like surely you'll be able to get two stars and I would definitely aim for three stars at least. As for Shiori, I would definitely Definitely try farming her node as well. Other noticeable mentions are Tamaki. Like Tamaki, she will help you in both arena and CB, especially if you're using her for her TP disrupt mechanic. Yukari is another one. So if you can get away with not using like one of these AOE healers and using Yukari, especially because of the TP boost, then I will definitely throw Yukari in. Yukari 3 is definitely a priority. Nozomi 3 is another priority, but we will outgrow her. Miyako is not a priority at all. She is serviceable at two stars. Unfortunately, she shares the same coins as Kari and Suzuna, and so like she is the lowest priority, especially with Ilya's release. Like she's just not really doing much right now. Ekron, we kind of want her at two stars and then we keep going on. Another couple of options actually is you could go for Hiyori, but she also shares the same coins as Tamaki. You could also farm for Mimi and Rei in the background, but like, I think this is already like quite good. Eventually we will be replacing these guys with more DPSs or potentially these guys with more DPSs. So if you guys do get like Rei or Hiyori or Mimi to like three star, that would definitely be good. All right, so moving on to mid game. So I'm going to say mid game is about like, you know, maybe like level 70, 80. So as I've been saying, the healers go first. So Eriko, she can definitely come in. She is probably one of like the better DPSs in my opinion. However, her downfall is that her life still kind of sucks. Then we've also got Rei and I would probably be using Tamaki. The thing about Tamaki is that she also steals TP. So she gets more UBs off than the other characters. Having used Mimi for a couple of CBs, she does provide the attack buff. However, her UB herself, like it's really, really slow. Actually, instead of Rei, I would say that Hiyori is actually better than Rei. However, this may not be 100% realistic considering Hiyori is sharing coins with Tamaki. So yeah, mid game, this is kind of what we're going to be looking for like potentially if you can swap out some tanks for more dps's and like a whole bunch of like these great dps's and supports there are a couple of like utility units in here that will help you survive so if you like really can't run this for example uh this one this is a pretty glassy team the only sustain we have is in nozomi's heal so for example we could take out um hiori and we could use akino instead that is of course if you do have akino another option again is to run like someone like yukari who has offensive capabilities but one of the most interesting options that we have received recently is actually Ayane who can disrupt the boss. However, you do need to kind of like learn a little bit more about the game mechanics before using Ayane. It's pretty much impossible to auto with Ayane because Ayane's utility is in her like ability to kind of disrupt some of the key boss moves that would otherwise do a crap load of damage. So in a way, Ayane CC actually like helps you mitigate some damage. So guys, we're going to take a short break here and I'm just going to give a few words from our sponsor LD Player. LD Player is a fast, free Android emulator that lets you play mobile games on PC. It's fully featured with custom controls, multi-instances, multi-instance syncing, and more. I've actually used LD Player before, most notably for games like Black Desert Mobile, <laughs> which was one of my guilty pleasures. <laughs> I've also used it for Princess Connect, and it runs quite well. I think it's a solid choice, lots of great reviews, and should suit all your needs. If you guys want to give LD Player a shot, I will drop a link in the description below. Thank you again, LD Player, for the sponsor. All right, guys, cool ad. Let's get back into it. All right, so at this point, I am going to assume that you are strong enough to like do something like this. Let's say um, Hiori in like this. All right, so for mid game, another option is to actually replace the tanks with healers. But you only really have this option if you can borrow five star units from your clan mates. So typically I'm talking about five star Makoto and Kari. So if we assume that you are actually able to borrow like five star Makotos for each one of them, with some of the bosses, not all of them, but some of them, five star Makoto and Kari can actually live even without these tanks. 
links. So the first thing that you should try out is like filling these spots with DPS. I think at this point, we don't have much DPS left. We've got like Mimi, we've got the, uh, I think we're actually going into three stars now. Like let's say Arisa and let's say uh, her. A better DPS than Akino would probably be Jita, but like even I don't have Jita. So like this is kind of how the comp be looking. For a lot of bosses, I want to say like you're not going to be able to do like the five star Makoto frontal tank and even Kari can't take it. So some of them you're going to have to be using Miyako. Uh, borrowing Jun to tank is not that good of an idea. And the reason is because Makoto provides like so much defense down that it just like does not make it worth it. So your first priority is to always borrow Makoto. If you do have a Makoto, say that's your own, then what you could do is actually borrow a five star Kari here. So for example, if you did have Makoto, then you could do this. Makoto Kari, another source of defense down. I probably actually like put Mitsuki in there rather than Shinobu. And the reason is because you're borrowing a five star Kari who is going to be doing probably the most damage out of all of the DPSs. So you want to load this team with as much defense down as possible. And that team is made up of Makoto and Mitsuki. Another option here is actually to put your Kokoro into this team. So it kind of looks like that. This team is actually looking like remarkably similar to one of our teams over here, a frontal tank example. You see that? So you can see why it's so important to have a Makoto because you can borrow a five star Kari to tank and reap the benefits of like an almost full DPS team. All right, coming back to here, let's put that back to Hiyori and let's not assume that, although we're kind of like running out of characters to use. To be honest, at this point, like in like mid game, it's pretty hard to believe that you're not going to have like any three star DPSs or like three star Makoto or Jun or something like that. So let's talk about like if you got each of these characters individually. In the case that you get Jun, she can just replace like one of these characters up here. What happens here is that Jun is taking, we've got Makoto, so therefore we have two sources of defense down. What that means is that Shinobu can actually go onto another team. For example, let's go over here. I'm going to replace this Shinobu with Mimi. So again, if you have Jun mid game, if you're able to tank it, Jun, Makoto, two sources of defense down, and then a whole bunch of physical DPS units. Let's take another case. So in the case that you get Saren, which is massive, you can actually run one of these comps, which is this one up here. This is called the battery comp because Saren's a TP charger. But out of all of these, if you do have Saren, you could just use Miyako up here. So it kind of is looking like that. And then instead borrow the Makoto. And boom, that is already like like another really good comp. The idea behind this comp is that Saren is constantly charging the Makoto's UB. And so therefore you're getting a lot more physical defense down uptime. All right, I'm going to undo that a little bit and then let's go back over and see what else we could do. If you do have an Arisa, she could definitely replace like, for example, Mimi. I think she's first on the replacement block or any other like physical DPS. For example, maybe you're getting your Tamaki up and your Hiyori is still like two star. So therefore you could just use your Arisa over here. But yeah, I think it's towards about the mid end game where you're going to start like getting a lot of these comps. Even if you're not able to pull Saren, you should be farming for her every day considering she has two nodes now. So honestly, she is the three star that I should be including in this. However, the other core CB units, so I'm talking like the Makoto and the Jun, they are not farmable, unfortunately. And that is why it is so important to reroll for Makoto and Jun. As you guys approach end game, you guys are going to be looking for teams like this. Hopefully you're not going to need like a Miyako or a Nozomi, but some of the bosses definitely do require it. If you guys do want to let these tanks out, you're going to need to replace it with some level of sustain. For example, one of the possible magic team comps, I'm actually going to replace this now. For late game, what we've got is Ilya up here. So let's say Ilya tank. She has to be five stars to tank here, as well as a Misato for support looking like this. Realistically, this then becomes you either borrow a five star Ilya or you borrow a Kyoka if you do have a five star Ilya. The last note I kind of wanted to make is that Shinobu, sometimes her defense down is not as significant as we think. So there may be times where you could actually experiment with another DPS instead of Shinobu, something like that, right? Again, a lot of this is trial and error on your own part. But yeah, other than that, I think you guys can kind of see like where I'm going with this. How to take kind of like a fresh account from zero and like incrementally build it into a CB team. Honestly, after your first CB, you should actually probably already be dropping the healers. After your second CB or like your second month or potentially your third month, you should definitely start looking at dropping tanks. Remember that the goal is to drop all of the tanks except for Jun because she has physical defense down. By about month four, you should honestly be able to put together a lot of these teams actually. The only problems I suppose are like if you don't have Jun, then you just got to use a Miyako instead. And if you don't have a Makoto, you're just going to replace her with a physical DPS. All right, I think that kind of wraps up the video here. If you guys have any questions, do let me know. So I'm going to leave you guys with a secret message from zero to hero. But what I want to know is if you guys kind of feel the same way about the progression through this video. So yeah, if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate that. It lets me know that you've made it to the end of the video and I will be forever grateful. But yeah, if this video has helped you or was mildly entertaining, consider a like, comment, a sub. You guys already know what time it is. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.